Well, let's uh, take a look at currencies now. Um, potentially a lot of movement ahead this week, uh, given uh, obviously the RBA meeting tomorrow. Lachlan Meakin joining us from Go Markets. Lachlan, a very good Monday morning to you. Well, before we oh, get yeah. to that big event tomorrow, let's first look at perhaps what happened on Friday out of the States. Um, look, we can then expect jobs numbers with the non farm payrolls report. Um, and as a, as a result, we saw those Treasury yields come off as well as the US dollar. Yes, it was a, a big drop for the US dollar last week, mate. I think Friday was just the icing on the cake. It had already been really coming off since that F FOMC meeting uh, earlier in the week. And, and the market's really pricing in not, not much chance of a Fed rate, uh, any more hikes out of the Fed. I think it's only 4% chance now for December. So markets have made their mind up that the Fed is done. Um, we saw those 10-year yields especially uh, really crater on that. And, and Forex really has just been following those yields for, for quite a while now. So obviously that's all the US dollar came out to come down. I think also um, just the, the improved risk sentiment in the market as well, saw some of that kind of safe haven flows come out of things like the US dollar. And you saw that also in gold where even though the US dollar cratered, gold hardly moved. So it's, um, I think some of that risk premium that was priced into the market, especially after the, uh, the Mid East uh, conflict began, is, is starting to come out as well. And every, everyone seems a bit more um, optimistic about what's going on. So equities up, dollar down. All right. So, Lachlan, then let's focus on tomorrow. So 50-50 uh, as to whether the RBA is going to lift rates. All right, let's look at the scenarios then. If it does, you would expect that would be supportive of the Aussie. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you're right, the, the interbank futures are pricing in slightly more than 50, I think, at the last look there for, for a hike. Um, I'm calling for a hike. I, I think they really don't have a choice if, if the credibility is going to remain there with, with the CPI figure the way it was and the, the messaging that's come out of the RBA that you know, if, if inflation can get back to a, a level where they could get back to their uh, target in, in a you know, reasonable time, they were going to have to hike again. So I think they will hike. Um, being a 50-50 bet, these are the ones where you'll get the most movement in the Aussie dollar, obviously. So um, I think that if they do hike, we will get a, a short spike up. Whether that um, lasts or not, it's really going to depend on, I think, more the market sentiment. So um, if, you, if you do think they're going to hike, yes, you could get a short-term trading, certainly on the Aussie. There will be a pop in it, almost guaranteed. Whether that's uh, sustained, we'll see. But I'm pretty confident on the Aussie. I think the, the general market feel a bit more optimistic. Uh, we've got this... Um, uh, Anthony o Albanese over in China, it all seems to be going well there. So I think the, the, if they do hike, it'll, it'll give it a pop. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it, it keep going on just on those other market forces too. Yeah, interesting. But of course, then if they don't hike, <laughs> it's a different story. If they don't, we'll certainly get that knee-jerk drop um, as the market, everyone gets positions themselves for, for, for the, the new rate kind of scenario. but. Again, whether that drop lasts or not will depend on you know the, the sentiment at the time. You could see a drop and then it start rallying again if if the general market sentiment's still um, positive. I don't think the RBA has been a massive driver of the Aussie dollar, um, except in, in short term bursts with these uh, rate decisions. It's it's more the the, the market forces, the the US dollar, the the differential between Aussie and US yields that really have been the driving force, the Aussie dollar. So I, I think there'll be a short spike either way on this decision tomorrow, but the carry through will depend on other factors. Yeah, okay. Obviously be watching that carefully when that decision drops at 2.30 Eastern tomorrow. Lachlan, another currency that's been making waves, Japanese yen. Um, look, the BOJ last week did tweak its uh, yield curve control. I, I dare say that the BOJ wasn't too pleased with the reaction on the market with the yen going in the direction they didn't want it to go. Yeah, it was a funny reaction, wasn't it? It was, um, I think, what I've read uh, that even though they, they tweaked that so yields would go a bit higher, the, the, the language around it was seen as dovish because they, they changed that language to as an upper band rather than a cap, which I guess Forex traders saw as less chance of a hard currency intervention anytime soon. But that little spike up there in dollar yen on Tuesday um, didn't last, obviously. As you see this chart here, I've, I've created this. This is the, the US 10-year yield minus the Japanese 10-year yield. You can see this, this pair has pretty much followed it um, tick for tick for over a year now. But um, that gap really has 
increased so that that differentials shrunk quite a bit that last week on the dollar yen so the with the japanese yields going up to push that that new cap at all the new upper band at one percent and the u.s yields coming off we've seen that differential really close up um so going from that differential i think that probably got more downside in the dollar yen and i think the uh the boj be quite happy with that that they haven't had to spend uh, uh, trillions in in interventions to see that happen. So, um, yeah, I think you'll see that dollar yen kind of close that gap with those yield differentials for the rest of this week. Um, for the US dollar, the outlook really, I would think, is going to be a week for this week until we get to, I think, Thursday when Powell speaks. It'll be very interesting to see if he pushes back on this um, new dovishness that the market's pricing in from the Fed or not. Um, and also, there's a consumer sentiment figure on Friday. So. I'm expecting US dollar to drift lower until then, um, depending on Powell's rhetoric and, and this consumer sentiment, we could see a turnaround. But uh, I think it's going to be a fairly quiet week, to be honest, Andrew. There's not a great deal of news. The RBA is obviously mm. the highlight. Yeah, absolutely. So any, any other pair you, you're liking at the moment? Uh, they're the, pretty much the ones I'm watching, mate. mate right. as a, I mean, you, you know me, the Aussie, Aussie Kiwi is always a favourite. And I think last time I said a 106 handle was a good buy and it's up to 108 now. So I'll take credit for that if anyone got on board. But um, certainly, that's always one to watch for anyone who's is interested in that kind of mean reversion uh, trades. And we've seen the Aussie Kiwi come off a little bit down to low eight. So keep an eye on that. If it does spike down lower on uh, tomorrow, if, if we don't hike, then uh, it might be a, a good, good look to get in there again.